Hi all. So in this video, we're going to see another topic from reproductive system, which is maternal changes during pregnancy. So this is usually asked as a short note for university exams. So we just basically go through what happens in each system during pregnancy. So the first change that can occur during pregnancy is a change in the body weight. So what will happen? There will be an increase in weight. And why is it so? It occurs mainly due to fat deposition, which is usually induced by progesterone. It also stimulates the food intake and diverts glucose for fat formation. Now, this is essential because the growing fetus needs glucose to grow. So, thus, the body will try to produce more glucose so that the fetus can grow. And in the third trimester, it is mainly due to an increase in the size of the fetus and uterus. And also, fluid retention will also contribute to the increase in weight gain during the last trimester. So, this is one important change that occurs during pregnancy. Next, we'll uh, see the changes in blood volume. So, in the blood volume, there's a rapid and significant increase in the total blood. So, increase about 40 percentage of the pre-pregnant stage. But you have to remember that here, why is there an increase in blood volume? Well, that is because there's an increase in plasma volume. There's a 40 percentage increase in plasma volume and a slight increase in red cell mass too. But the problem is we have a dilutional anemia because the increase in plasma is more. Okay, So that is the main change that occurs in the blood. Next, another change that occurs in the blood volume is that due to the expansion of ECF, that is extracellular fluid volume increases and because of that, and that occurs, the increase in ESA volume occurs due to retention of sodium and water. And due to increase in the red cell mass, there's, there's an increase in red cell mass due to an increased erythropoietin production. So see here, this is a graph which shows the duration of pregnancy and the blood volume. Here you can see that the blood volume increases especially after 24 weeks of gestation and it reaches a peak at around the time of parturition, that is childbirth. So the changes in blood volume are that there's an expansion of ECF and also an increase in red cell mass. Next, another important point is there's something called, as I said before, there is something called physiological anemia of pregnancy. So what is physiological anemia of pregnancy? See, even though there's an increase in red cell mass, the rate of increase is slower and lesser when compared to the increase in plasma volume. Thus, there is a relative decrease in the red cell count when compared to the plasma volume. So, that means there is a chemodilution and this is called the physiological anemia of pregnancy. So, in blood volume, just uh, the main two points are there is an increase in plasma volume, there is an increase in red cell volume, but there is a physiological anemia. Next change is, what are the other hematological changes in pregnancy? First, First of all, why, why are the hematological changes? There are hematological changes because we have to increase the oxygen supply to the fetus and protect the fetus against infection. So, the first change is that the red cell count increases around 10, 20 to 30 percentage. The leukocytes also increases, uh, mainly due to neutrophilia. The platelet count remains almost normal. And also, but the problem is the difference is that there is an increase in the procoagulant activity. That means the blood can clot easily and that is due to the increased hepatic synthesis of clotting factors by estrogen. See during pregnancy we've got a lot of estrogen that will stimulate hepatic synthesis of clotting factors and thus we have a procoagulant state. So the applied aspect is that in complications of pregnancy we can see this disseminated intravascular coagulation that can be disseminated intravascular coagulation because of this activation of clotting factors. So these are the main hematological changes. Next, we will see the cardiovascular changes. So, the important cardiovascular change is that the cardiac output will increase. And how does cardiac output increase? There is an increase in both heart rate as well as stroke volume. So, why is there an increase in this stroke volume? That is because we have got an increase in diastolic volume, which is due to increased venous citron, which in turn is due to increased blood volume. So, see, we said that the blood volume increases, right, because of the increase in plasma as well as red cell count. Thus, venous return increases, which in turn will cause an increased end diastolic volume. So, that is how cardiac output increases. The next change in cardiovascular system is that because of this increased cardiac output, 
the blood pressure can also increase. So the systolic BP can increase. What about diastolic pressure? See, due to the vasodilatory effect of the progesterone, diastolic BP actually decreases. Okay. So these are the main changes in the cardiovascular system. Cardiac output increases, systolic BP increases, but diastolic BP decreases. Next, we will see changes in the respiratory system. So in the respiratory system, there is an increase in the minute ventilation. Okay, and that is due to the stimulation of the respiratory centers by estrogen. What about the other volumes? See, the residual volume decreases by about 20 percentage. The expiratory reserve volume decreases by about 15 percentage. And the inspiratory reserve volume increases. So, these are the different changes that occur in respiratory system. Basically, you can see that the residual volume and the expiratory reserve volume decreases. Whereas, the inspiratory reserve volume increases. Next, we will see the changes in the renal system so what have what are the changes in the renal system renal blood flow will increase by 35 percentage and why is it so see there's an increased local production of prostaglandins which will cause renal vasodilatation which in turn will cause increased renal plasma flow now another another change in uh, during in renal system is that see why is this lady holding an orange tube what does it indicate yes it's glycosuria so see why is there a glycosuria that is because the load of filtered glucose increases without increase in the tubular capacity to reabsorb glucose see the capacity of the renal tubules to reabsorb glucose is, is, a, is a constant but here the renal blood flow increases so what happens there's an increased glucose load so the whole thing may not be able to be reabsorbed thus there can be glycosuria especially in pregnant women okay so these are the changes in the renal system there's an increase in plasma flow why because of the local vasodilatation produced by prostaglandins second there can be a chance of glucosuria next we'll see the changes in the gastrointestinal system what happens in gastrointestinal system the gi motility is decreased that means there's an increased transit time for the chyme to pass through the intestinal lumen so there'll be more water absorption and there can be constipation which is especially difficult for pregnant females another change in the gastrointestinal system is that towards term their enlarged uterus will start to press on the stomach so this in turn can cause an increased intragastric pressure which in turn will propel that acidic content into the esophagus which can cause reflex esophagitis so heart burns are very common during pregnancy because of this enlarged uterus which is pressing on the stomach right so that completes gastrointestinal system. Next, we'll see about the endocrine system. So in the endocrine system, mainly in the pituitary gland, the size of the anterior lobe increases. So there's an increase in size and number of the prolactin secreting cells. Remember, prolactin is a very important hormone when it's concerned with pregnancy and lactation. So the anterior lobe size increases and prolactin cells also increase. Not only that, there's a hypothalamus pituitary ovarian axis. Now, because of this high level of sex steroids, this axis will be suppressed. So, hypothalamus pituitary ovarian axis will be suppressed and thus there will be decreased LH and FSH. The luteinizing as well as the follicle stimulating hormone will decrease and thus there will be no ovulation during this pregnancy period. Okay. Another change that can occur in the endocrine system is that the thyroid gland. See, there is an increase in glomerular filtration rate, right? So, there is an increased renal clearance of iodine, which means there is a depletion of iodine pool. So, thus we can see that during pregnancy, there will always mostly be a moderate increase in size of the thyroid gland unless you have proper iodine intake. So, see what happens in thyroid. Why do we have a, a goiter in pregnancy? That is because there is an increased GFR, which in turn will increase the renal clearance of iodine, which in turn will deplete the iodine pool. Next change in endocrine system is for adrenal glands. In adrenal glands, there is increased secretion of glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids. And uh, so what about calcium metabolism? See, we usually hear that it's, it's good for pregnant females to drink milk. Why? Well, that is because there is an increased absorption of calcium from the GI tract by the vitamin D and an increase in parathyroid hormone secretion. However, calcium supplementation is invariably given in the later part of pregnancy. So, even though there is an increased absorption of calcium in the calcium and uh, even though there is an increase in parathyroid hormone, 
for the growing fetus it needs increased calcium thus we supplement calcium during pregnancy so that would complete the major systems or the major systems in which changes can occur during pregnancy so as a recap what are the changes in the hematological system or what are the hematological changes there's an increase in erythrocyte volume increased leukocytes and increased risk for thromboembolism what are the cardiac changes there's an increase in heart rate cardiac output stroke volume and we also mentioned another point there's an increase in systolic bp but a decrease in diastolic bp what about pulmonary we said the ventilation per minute increases and we also talked about the residual volume and the expiratory and inspiratory reserve volumes next what about gastrointestinal we said there's a decrease motility so constipation can be there renal there's an increase in gfr next endocrine we talked about thyroid cortisol prolactin and finally in the musculoskeletal actually there's one more a small point here in musculoskeletal system we can also have an increased lumbar lordosis and joint laxity so that would complete the maternal changes in pregnancy so i hope this concept was clear thank you